This is Kimi. And this is Robin. And you're on the Spirit Path. Hi, and welcome to Spirit Path Podcast. Our intention is to share stories, inspiration, and tools for people to walk their own spiritual paths, since everyone's path is unique and different. We started this podcast to offer a refreshing new outlook on spirituality and a holistic health. Hello and welcome to episode three, Spirituality, Intuition, and Divine Guidance. Today we are talking about how the body is always receiving messages. It's basically a sensory organ. And we're going to talk about how to tell the difference between receiving true divine guidance and when we're receiving false guidance. So generally when people think of intuition, uh, sometimes people connect it to being psychic when really we're all psychic. Intuition is about natural sensitivities to the energies around us. So we are naturally intuitive and it's hard for people not to be intuitive because being intuitive is part of our divine intelligence. So we'll be exploring and discussing intuition, uh, how to recognize it and the various ways intuition speaks to people. We'll also be talking about how reading energy and managing energy are connected to your intuition. Um, And that's how our spirit communicates with us. And we're also going to talk about people's fears about intuition. So two things that I feel uh, really scare people about following or trusting their intuition is number one, uh, discerning which voice is your inner voice or divine guidance, and then which voice is not. And then what, what and who are these other voices? And then the second thing that scares people is taking responsibility for managing uh, their energy and taking responsibility for their happiness by creating things that they want in their life instead of things that they fear. And I mean, I totally get it. I mean, that's a, that's a practice in itself. And, you know, following your intuition can help you in creating those dreams and desires that you're already receiving messages about. So intuition is one of those things that we've all experienced. And some of us have worked closely with it for most of our lives, but sometimes it's, it's difficult to define. Uh, intuition is the ability to know or understand something immediately without reasoning it. So it's just like a boom, like you just snap the fingers instantaneously, you know it. And then to take that a step further, we would say that intuition is the ability to read energy. And even Einstein says, everything is energy, your body, your kitchen table, your dog, and your thoughts and feelings that those are also energy. So basically, your spirit is energy. And we can key in on different energy frequencies and interpret them instantaneously. And we actually do it quite naturally. It's nothing that we have to really try and work at. One example is a gut feeling when you just have a feeling like you know something's going to happen and maybe you just know you need to leave for work five minutes early. And then that turns out to be just enough time to see like a friend at the grocery store or you might avoid a really bad traffic jam um, or, you know, any kind of synchronistic event like that. Or like you might look at someone and you just know something about them. Maybe, you know, they're sad or, you know, they're expecting a child. I feel like, Robin, you're pretty good at that. (laughs) But you don't, maybe you don't know or understand how you know it. You just do. And then you have to, once you, you know, learn how to hone in on your intuition, then you really have to learn how to trust your sensitivities. Because again, being sensitive isn't like something that's, you know, um, popular or people hold up as a, a strong characteristic, but it's actually very strong that, you know, people who are sensitive. Um, A huge part of uh, trusting your sensitivities is really having a strong self-esteem to trust and know that what you are feeling is important and a a value, you know, to the moment or just to your life path. And now Dr. Wayne Dyer, he describes intuition as a reliable voice in whatever form it expresses itself. So it's exactly what we're talking about today. How do we receive messages And how do we know if it's true divine guidance coming from a divine source, like our higher selves, our souls, our angels or spirit guides, God, or whatever you call God. It's also then the false guidance that comes from our lower or ego aspects of ourselves that can people might get mixed up. So how do we figure out which is which? 
I first learned about even the idea of true and false guidance from Doreen Virtue's book. Uh, it's called Divine Guidance, How to Have a Dialogue with God and Your Angels. This book was really cool. It was pretty life-changing for me. And then I actually got a chance to work with these methods with Doreen Virtue in person. I did um, an angel therapy retreat in Hawaii in 2010. And Robin and I have been working with these ideas and improving upon and our application and our information about you know, working with energies since really that time. And just a little funny side, uh, you know, back when I had first met Kimi in college, uh, we used to go to the store in Tallahassee, Florida called like, oh gosh, it was some kind of um, a spiritual uh, sort of spiritual store that had books and candles and things like that. I can't think of the name right now, but it's, it's like in the back of the moon, a club in Tallahassee anyway. And we would always see these Dorian virtue books about angels. And we were like, Oh, you know, is that her real name? And in which it is and her married name at the time. And, you know, we would just kind of look through these books, but we wouldn't buy them. So it's just so funny. Like years later, her work ended up coming up both in a, at a time where we were on these spiritual journeys and both, kind of interested in uh, getting closer to understanding our higher selves and things like that. So anyway, let's first talk about true divine guidance and false guidance cause, because that's where you want to start. So for, fortunately, uh, there are clear cut distinctions between divine and false guidance. Divine guidance comes from God and God's creations, which includes our higher selves. Um, so that part of us that's always connected to source, it's that part of us that's whole, complete, and it's in the image of creator, you know, your highest self. False guidance is different. That comes from our lower selves or the ego. And that's created by the idea that we're separate from God or separate from source. And the information that comes from your lower self is is based on illusions. Uh, Our higher self is loving, confident, generous, consistent, Uh, It urges us to fulfill our divine purpose. It's interested usually in win-win situations. It has a positive voice, even when warning you about danger. And it's focused on the present moment. So in contrast, the lower self um, is typically more that jealous, insecure, greedy, clumsy, you know, aspect of ourselves. Um, It has an abusive, demanding voice. And it only sees like win lose situations or outcomes and feelings of guilt or feelings of needing to scheme or manipulate focusing on the future tends to be the lower self or false guidance. So, for example, the higher self might say, take the highway, you know, and here in Atlanta, the traffic is so bad and always packed on the highway. So then maybe the lower self will say, no, don't take the highway. It has a lot of traffic. It'll take longer. And then once you arrive, you'll be in a bad mood. You know, so again, it's like in the future, it's kind of a win-lose situation. Um, But the higher self sounds more confident and just more urging you to not worry, you know, so much about danger, but being present in the moment. Yeah, and I feel like the voice of your higher self is always a lot more optimistic. Like I know for me, I felt like I definitely got the idea, you should you should write a screenplay. But my lower self was kind of like, what? I've never written a screenplay before. How would I do that? It's going to be forever to learn and, you know, or just impossible to really figure that out. But I felt like my higher self was just more kind of open to ideas and optimistic and ready to go. And then in Doreen Virtue's book, uh, Divine Guidance, you know, she gives an example of, you know, you might hear from your higher self, everything is going to work out great. And then the lawyer, lower self says, what if it doesn't? Or how, how am I going to get there? You know, things like that. Definitely when that how and should, I feel like comes up very strongly, uh, you may want to just check in and make sure it's not your ego, because I feel like when those two words creep in, it kind of is like signaling like that it could be your ego or lower voice talking. Um, and it's not to say that you don't plan for things to happen like it's, you know, the how, but sometimes it's just about being open to an idea. And once you're there and open to it and you set your intention, the how will start to take care of itself already. But when that how or should comes in, it can just kind of shut you down, you know, before you're even open to trying or doing anything different. And so our higher selves are just speaking to us all the time. And it's that consistent, reliable voice that we're always hearing. And really, it comes to us through our senses, through, you know, hearing, through seeing, through touch, we receive information through those channels. 
And so when we are like clearly receiving information through those channels, for example, seeing, it's called clair, clairvoyance, clear seeing. And that's one of the ways um, in which spirit talks to us. And then when we're hearing clearly, it's called clair audience. And for feeling, it's called clairsentience. That's clear feeling. And clear knowing is claircognizance. And that's just when you know something right off the bat, no reasoning. And we like to affectionately refer to these as the clairs. Yes. And so we'll break each one down. And again, we'll talk more about this so you can start to figure this out for yourself too. But an example of clairvoyance or clear seeing would be seeing spirit energy like auras or it could be seeing things differently where you're perceiving things that other people don't. So um, maybe you have heard like seeing with your third eye or your internal vision. So clairsentience is clear feeling. It's that gut feeling like butterflies in your stomach or a sick feeling. It can be emotions like walking to a room and if people are feeling sad or angry, you can sort of pick up on that, you know, in your body. Uh, And then clear audience is clear hearing. So this includes hearing things with your outer ear, like disembodied voices or sounds or hearing things with your inner ear. Very similar to clairvoyance in that way. And then the last one, claircognizant or clear knowing is when a full idea or scenario just pops up into your mind. You may be thinking of one thing and then just another full idea comes into your mind. It doesn't need a source of inspiration. Yeah. And it's like when you, sometimes I feel like when you hear about these clairs, like clairvoyance, you think that means you're going to see a full on specter or <laughs> phantasmagoria in your room. It wait, 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 hold on. That. You got to break down <laughs> what, what all the, like, <laughs> you're, like you're going to see a ghost, you know, like okay. a full on image and apparition. And so that's not always how it works. Sometimes you might just, like you said, see something in your mind's eye, or it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hear disembodied voices. Although I feel like I, you know, sometimes I hear that. Like, don't you sometimes hear your name being called and it sounds like it's in your voice? (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me tell you. Has that ever happened to you? Am I alone? (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, I've, I've had... I've had that happen. I won't say it was a lot, but I've, I've, I feel like, and I've had it happen this year where like, I just heard someone say my name, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. I know it happened one time, like I was waking up out of a dream and I, and I thought I heard someone say my name and I'm like, okay. That's a really popular time for that to happen. Yeah. Right. When you're waking up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like the, you can't have cases like that, but sometimes you can, you know, the clairs can work together where you might hear something and then your claircognizant Claire cognizance kicks in and all of a sudden you're like oh my god I just know the full backstory to that or you see something and you're you're like mm, I know you're up to no good or yeah. I just feel your vibes you know right so they can work together like that too yeah absolutely so today's show we thought it'd be fun for all of us to take a quiz a little short quiz to find out what is the primary channel um, that you receive divine communication And then we're going to discuss how each channel works and how you can make it stronger. And, you know, we may receive divine communication in more than one way. It could be through our visions and feelings or through thoughts and sounds. But usually there's one, maybe two channels that's the strongest for us. Okay, so let's dive into this quiz. First question. Okay, and now remember, this is for you to discover which one is going to be your primary clear where you receive guidance the strongest. Okay. Okay. So think about the following scenarios and then answer the question. Just choose only one response for each question. Okay. Question number one, when you initially meet someone, so you're meeting this person for the first time, what is the first thing you tend to notice about them? A, is it the way the person looks like their clothes, their teeth, their shoes or, you know, you know, just their general attractiveness. B, do you notice first how you feel about that person? Like, are you comfortable around them? Are you amused or do you feel unsafe? What, whatever it is, does that, is that the first reaction? Um, C, whether you, do you think about whether or not is this person interesting or is this someone that can help me out in my career? Maybe give me some tidbit. Is that the kind of thing that first comes to you? Or is it D, the sound of the person's voice? Maybe they have a cool or funny laugh or they have a neat way of pronouncing things. So A, B, or C. Or D. Or, right, or D. And you're gonna, we're going to take the quiz too. Mm-hmm. All right, so question number two. 
Think back on a vacation you took. What stands out most in your memory? A, the beautiful sights of nature, the architecture, or something that you witnessed. B, the peaceful, romantic, restful, or exhilarating feelings associated with the trip. C, the important, interesting cultural and or historical information that you learned while traveling. Or D, the sweet silence, the crashing surf, the chirping birds, the rustling leaves, music, or some other sound. All right, so number three, think of a movie that you truly enjoyed. So I think for me, that's going to be right away, Black Panther. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Um, so think about the uh, a movie that you really, really enjoyed. Okay, so when you think of that film, what comes to mind first? Is it A, the attractive actors and actresses? <laughs> Michael G. B. B. Jordan. Um, <laughs> the, the lighting, the costumes or scenery? B, the way the movie is made, you did you laugh or did you cry or, you know, something like that? The way the movie made you feel. I'm sorry. Uh, C, was it the interesting plot? Like you really thought there were cool life lessons in the movie or do you like the lessons that the character learned? Or is it D, did you really like the music or the score, the sound of the actresses and actors' voices? Number four, picture a childhood friend. What first comes to your mind? The way the person looks, the color of their hair, their smile. B, the way you felt around them, happy, sad. C, what you learned from your friendship with them, loyalty, trust, lessons. Or D, do you hear their voice, conversations you had with them, and their laughter? All right, so we only have three left, last three questions. Question five. What do you most, what would you most like to improve about yourself? So this is the thing that you would change um, if you could. A, your appearance. B, how you feel about yourself. C, knowledge about your favorite topic, like maybe you become super smart. Or D, your voice. Okay. Getting deep. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Question six. I would love to relax by A, watching TV or a movie. B, soaking in a tub, taking a bath. C, reading a book. Or D, listening to music. Mm, that's a hard one for me. I feel like I want to choose two. Okay, now. Look, okay, okay, I'm just, okay, you know. Just re- <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, sure I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not alone out here in the world. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> last question. Question number seven. If you receive some extra money right now, What is the first thing you would buy? A, something to beautify your life, like maybe art, jewelry, or furniture, or maybe a new car. B, would you go on a rejuvenating trip or just really somewhere fun, pack up all your friends? Or C, would you upgrade your computer system? Or D, would you get front row seats to your favorite music show? Okay, so now you're going to add up your answers, how many A's, how many B's, C's, or D's you have, and then we're going to go through and find out what is your strongest Claire. As a Banyan Botanicals affiliate, I highly recommend their Ayurveda products. All of Banyan's products are organic, fairly traded and sourced, sustainable, and USDA approved. To buy all your Banyan products and support the show, Click on the link in the show notes or description. Okay, now that we've tallied up our scores, um, uh, if you're like me and you got mostly A's. And me. <laughs> and Robin. <laughs> um, then that means your first channel is clairvoyance. Okay, so people who uh, have clairvoyance as their primary channel um, also have what's known as clear seeing. And these are people who are known to have a second sight or see things in the invisible realm, um, which I was talking about earlier. And this is just one, you know, maybe extreme or maybe not very common way. Some people might see things, some people may not. That's not the only way you can receive clairvoyant um, hits. So for clear seeing people, it's like their visual sight or their inner sight gives them messages. And these messages can be something you see with your eyes in the daytime. They can be things you see in a dream or daydreaming. I mean, I feel like that's like my favorite pastime. I'm a big daydreamer. 
um, or just, you know, maybe you're spacing out and you just see something or you see something in the corner of your eye. All those things can be giving you clairvoyant hits. Like you might find yourself saying, I could see that happening. You know, psychics are often portrayed as clairvoyance, but that is only one way to experience receiving divine communication. And again, we're all we're all psychics. Yeah. We're always receiving information. It's just about knowing how to interpret it. So, you know, people say seeing is believing, and that's like a really strong belief in our culture that we've adopted. So a lot of people look for clairvoyance, and they seem to place like a higher value on that. But clairvoyance isn't everyone's strongest channel. Um, to receive divine messages. So you have to really pay attention to your channel. But for people who are clairvoyant, um, you know, really pay attention to your visuals. Uh, Maybe you notice what people are wearing or how they're wearing it, shapes, colors, and that might bring up feelings for you or even ideas might trigger other clairs that you have. So um, people with clairvoyance might also just pay attention to things that are pleasing to your eyes um, or things that are distasteful to you that could just be telling you a little bit more about the energy or how you're connecting with that energy. Um, And these people are also known to see things like flashing lights or colors or maybe even they see departed loved ones um, or someone like sometimes you might see someone who looks familiar to someone who's passed on that's also a message or a sign so really pay attention to all these messages and how they make you feel or what they make you think about um or you might see a little mini movie playing in your mind or playing out a scenario or showing the end result of something um that you know you'll kind of know whether or not you should carry out that task so you can receive inspiration and a lot of guidance from your clairvoyance And people can really develop their clairvoyance through visualization exercises or visual meditations, which I personally love to do. And you can get some really powerful healing experiences um, from visualizing. And it's a great way to manifest. And I just want to also say it's really important to pay attention if something is is pleasing to you or if you are repulsed by it, because I feel like that's a real message for you. And you should follow it and not think, oh, I'm repulsed by this and then maybe judge yourself just maybe trust yourself. <laughs> so yes, clair- clairvoyance is one of my strongest clairs. And uh, so I'll, sometimes I'll just get like, like Kimi was saying, like a, a little mini movie or a little vision in my, my inner eye. And like, for, so for instance, before I ever visited Italy, uh, I, I just had this uh, vision or I think it was, I think it was a dream, but I had a dream that I was in this kitchen eating and cooking this delicious Italian food. But what I didn't know is I ended up having a really good friend who was from Sicily and, you know, he invited me to visit, you know, him and his family in Sicily. And I went there and, you know, of course I was eating all this wonderful food in their beautiful kitchen. But one at one day that I was there, I was just sitting there and his mom was making something. And I looked up and I was like, oh my God, this is, this was in my dream. Like the shape of the window and the, the curtains and just, you know, the colors and, and then, you know, the dishes and just everything. Like it was literally something I had already seen, um, that I was going to experience. So that's just an example of how, for me, you know, how clair clairvoyance can work. Okay, so let's go on to if you mostly chose bees. If you mostly chose bees, you're clairsentient. Uh, This is one of my favorites, and this is my uh, second strongest. It means clear feeling. So this is such a big deal, I know, for me and Kimi, because we're also very clairsentient. And this just means that we're very sensitive to easily picking up on energies. So people who are clairsentient feel things through their bodies and their emotions. So you can really receive information through your feelings and um, they say like when you feel something that's not right or you feel like something's, someone's not being honest, you know, that's information that you're feeling um, that can give you some divine information. So some examples of this that Doreen gives is that you could feel really happy or, or a lot of joy in your heart and that could be a signal that you're on the right path. So for instance, sometimes when um, people, you know, try to give you advice about what you should be doing with your life. And they'll say, okay, what's something that you've done where you've lost track of time and it gave you a lot of joy. I mean, those, that, those feelings and those emotions are giving you information, uh, that something that might be your life purpose or a passion or something that might be showing that you're on the right path. Um, and then you also could maybe feel sometimes feelings of heaviness in your body or feelings of dread, particularly around the heart and stomach areas, because those areas hold important 
uh, information regarding your chakra centers or the energetic uh, centers throughout the body. And we'll talk about chakras more in another episode. But have you ever had a, a situation where you feel a lot of dread and heaviness or maybe a feeling that you need to make changes? fatigue or tiredness, those are all signals from your body that it can be take, means to take a, take a rest or can mean to take a break or just go play and have fun. And these are real messages for sensitive people out there. So another way that you can look at clairsentient, it might be an experience that where you're taking on someone else's feelings. So, you know, there, there are times where maybe you wake up and you kind of feel sad or irritated Um, and you only find out that you're really absorbing someone else's energies or their sadness and anger. And it really has nothing to do about you. You could just be picking up on that energies. Cause again, like Kimi was saying, we're all, everything is energy. So clairsentience, they do this because they're just a lot of times naturally very compassionate people. So, you know, when I'm trying to maybe comfort someone or if, you know, um, I'm starting to, you know, listen to somebody's pain or sad story or their experience, I might start to experience those feelings as well. So it's like empathy run amok. Um, so, you know, I, I know for me, I had to learn of new ways to disconnect from that energy and then sending that energy back to where it belongs and then just bringing my energy back from that person. So here's an example. Uh, so again, Oprah, who we love the Oprah Winfrey show. Oprah said like when she, I feel like she probably definitely could be clairsentient um, because she's just a very compassionate, empathetic person. And I know when she first started doing these interviews on her show, she, you know, she would do the ugly, what she called the ugly cry. And, but then eventually she had to figure out ways to kind of put a little bit of a boundary up because, you know, she'd be sitting there crying right along, you know, with the person because she's feeling it, you know, almost like what they would, they would be feeling. And then, you know, eventually I feel like she kind of learned and understood energy management in a different sort of way. Yeah. Managing your energy is something that's really important for me too, because I tend to soak up uh, feelings like a sponge and I wonder all my cancer signs out there. I'm sure you're like that too, or people who have a lot of water in their chart. Um, you can always check out our astrology show where we can tell you where to get your free natal chart. If you don't know if you have a lot of water in your chart, Um, but some good ways to kind of help yourself disconnect from absorbing so much energy. Like for example, let's say you're talking to a friend and maybe they're really upset and, um, you're being a good clairsentient friend and you're looking them in the eyes and really listening, but you feel that you're taking on all that energy. You can simply just kind of disconnect, um, your eyes from that person. Maybe look away from them. I know it might sound harsh, but it's not really, it's just you're not taking that energy in the same. Or you can move your body so that your hearts aren't facing one another. Kind of break that um, line of energy. And that doesn't mean you've checked out or that you don't want to talk to them. It just means you don't want to contract their emotional state. You'd like to keep your own emotional state intact. Um, and you can you can do that without almost even being aware of it. So it's just a way to nurture yourself. And another thing that can help clear sentience is to release feelings by emoting. Yes, a good old cry. Cry it out, scream into a pillow. I mean, I feel like so many people are afraid of crying, like they think it means they're weak or something, but really it's it's just a great energy release. It does it you don't have to own those feelings like I'm sad, just let it out. And you can also use cinema therapy. Um, you know, watch a movie or something that's mirroring your feelings. Like if you are feeling sad, watch a sad movie and that will allow you to just emote with that character and then you can release it as well. And you can do it with music too. You know, listen to your favorite love songs, broken heart or angry music, whatever it is you need to kind of help you work that energy out. So it's also, you know, you can do things like pranic energy healing too, or cord cutting, working with crystals. There's so many ways you can clear your energy. Yes, because you definitely don't want to suppress, you know, your feelings and push all of that down. And, you know, these strategies that we're talking about, you know, we'll talk, we're going to go into more detail um, about them in later episodes, too. The point um, is that feeling what you're feeling, it has to be released. So yeah, crying is easy and fastest way to do it for some people. But I mean, I know know it's not like that for everybody. But for me, that's a, a, a great way. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're mad or sad or confused, just allow it to release. So that's again, it could be one tear, a stream of tears or a few wails, but you will feel so much lighter. And you don't need to, you know, to do this publicly necessary, 
or, you know, even tell anyone that you're doing it, but just let that emotional energy, you know, release because if it builds up and clogs, it clogs you up. It can create physical pain, emotional pain, disease. So clairsentient people, they can also have a difficult time being in crowds or in a lot of traffic. So if you're one of those people, don't be ashamed about that. You know, that could just be a natural part of how you receive, you know, divine guidance. You know, you don't need to be in those crowded spaces. So emotional energy one can pick up in situations can feel overwhelming. So there are shielding strategies that can help you with that as well. And that can be done through saying a prayer or just visualizing a bubble of light around you. Um, Also, clairsentience can be very sensitive to chemicals in foods and cosmetics, and that might require a diet or product change. And that is like one of the first, I feel like, you know, information and guidance I received, you know, when kind of more working with angels and just working with my own divine guidance is cleaning up my diet. Yeah, the first thing I received was cleaning up my products, Um, you know, like lotions and shampoos deodorants, anything, makeup. I mean, that was really like a strong message for me where I felt like I really started kind of clearing up my channel. Um, And, you know, even with food for me, I really kind of, as a young person, just naturally chose to be vegetarian. Uh, then, Then I would kind of go in and out of like would eat meat sometimes, sometimes just to be cool to fit in, (laughs) but it really wasn't my preference. And even for a while, I thought I couldn't even eat, you know, certain fruits like strawberries or bananas, watermelon, cantaloupe. I thought I was just allergic to them. But when I started eating, um, organic fruits, I really, I could eat it. I saw it was like the pesticides. I just had a real sensitivity to it. So that's definitely, all those are signs of strong clairsentience. Oh, I know. I totally remember your throat would itch and swell up sometimes when you were eating those fruits, you know, that did have pesticides. So, yeah, I'm glad you found that out. And I mean, even me. uh, All right. I'm about to lose my black card here, everybody. I'm allergic to chicken. Yes. And that was I know it's so crazy. But that was something that I found out and I went through an allergy test. Even the doctor didn't really believe it was a big deal. But then it did show up in my um, on my test that I was allergic to chicken. And I mean, I don't know what it is, but, you know, I just started moving towards vegan and vegetarian uh, diets and and getting away from refined sugar as of late. And I definitely just feel like things are clear because I feel like my feelings and and emotions, it's like the, it's definitely been like flushed out some. So Doreen also says that clairsentient people are often called or accused of being too sensitive. So if you are clairsentient, it's important to honor how you feel around other people because I don't know what it is about this society, but it tries to convince you like what you're feeling or what you're experiencing isn't real. I mean, it happens in so many different ways. So you have to, like I was saying, develop the self-esteem to trust in yourself and what you are experiencing because only you are experiencing it. So notice how you feel after interactions with people. So perhaps you get off of the phone with a friend or a coworker. How do you feel? You know, do you feel sad, depressed out of nowhere? Um, you know, or do you feel like uplifted and a good mood? I mean, those things, again, it's all information that you're receiving. So you really want to just nurture your feelings if you're clairsentient and know, um, notice how your body feels in the moment. So if you are sensitive and you tend to absorb what other people may be feeling or experiencing, it's important to know that you can make decisions that's supportive to you and your energy at the time, whether again, like those shielding practices or uh, just choosing, you know, how, how much you interact and how you interact with certain people or situations. Definitely. And I just feel like if it feels good, go towards that (laughs) and away from the thing that feels bad. Okay. Moving on. So if you mostly chose C's, that means you are claircognizant. So claircognizance, um, it involves a keen intellect and it means you receive information through ideas and uh, revelations. And I feel like, Robin, that happens to you a lot. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it happened with two friends of mine, Gina and Brad. I know they don't know anything about this, but uh, for some reason, I just it was just like I just knew they were going to, you know, be pregnant or have, you know, someone's going to have children. And these are two different people, two different couples. So, you know, and I, you know, you don't want to ask someone that or because you don't know what's going on, you know, with people if they're trying to have a family and everything. And, you know, I didn't want to be rude or imposing. But for some reason, you know, I just knew 
okay, you know, Gina's going to be having a baby. And then, then it was like maybe a week or two after that. I just like, I just knew like, okay, Brad, Brad's going to have it. And then sure enough, you know, they announced it on social media and I'm like, oh my God, I totally knew it. So it was kind of funny. Okay. So if you mostly chose C's, that means you are clear cognizant. And clear cognizance, um, it involves a keen intellect, and it, re- it means that you're receiving messages through ideas and revelations. So these people will sometimes have information about something without any previous research or knowledge on the subject. They'll just intuitively know something already about it. Um, I know sometimes I've seen like little YouTube videos where like kids know details about like a civil war or something they weren't even alive for, but they just know everything so clearly. Or, you know, for example, maybe a claircognizant person will just know how to fix things or they're really good at putting furniture together without even looking at the instructions. And I mean, sometimes those instructions aren't the clearest anyway. So (laughs) I feel like people who do that probably definitely have some claircognizance. And these people are sometimes called know-it-alls because they just might know a lot of things about a lot of things. And sometimes these people are not really good with small talk because they prefer having deeper conversations um, because their knowledge base is just so deep. So it's those people who have like a sudden knowingness and they have thoughts that seem random or unimportant. And you're like, what, what are you even talking about? And it'll really just have ring true for them or bring in some other information. I always think this is such a cool trait to have. Um, I feel like I have it in, in connection with clairsentience or clairvoyant, clairvoyance. Like I'll see something and then I'll have an idea about it or hear something or feel something. Yeah. Clear audience. That's another one too. I'm really interested in, or I'd like to, you know, grow my own, my own skill base in that clear. So for example, when you meet a person and if you're clear cognizant, you might not know anything about them, uh, but you might just have an idea and you know something about them and it totally turns out to be true. And sometimes these people will get just really good ideas, but then they might, you know, your lower self might talk you into dismissing these ideas or downplaying it. Like everybody knows this or everybody's thinking about that or pursuing this idea. And really they're not, or not in the way that you're thinking about it. Maybe you have an idea, you know, that's really unique and rare, but you don't really see it as that. And these are people who are really often found saying something like, I knew it. I knew that was going to happen, but they have no idea how they knew it was going to happen. It's just, it just came out and it's that confident, clear knowing deep within them without logic or reasons that is claircognizant. So if you are claircognizant, it's really important for you to pay attention to these thoughts and ideas that, and, and keep a journal and really write these things down. Um, And, you know, when thoughts come to you, they could really be divine thoughts and divine guidance. So that's really cool. Yeah, I I also feel like uh, Claire Cognizant is another strong Claire of mine, too. But I feel like mine works in conjunction with Claire Sentience. So it's like maybe I meet someone, you know, and I kind of just feel the vibe, you know, out about, you know, I don't know, like I'll just feel, you know, feel a little bit about maybe the person or some motives or something. And then... I'll just say, I just know this person. It it happened actually recently at a, at a a former place I worked and, you know, I met the person and I just was like, "Ah, I don't know about this. You know, something just felt a little off. And I, and then, you know, after maybe the first few weeks of working, I just said, I just have a, you know, I just know and have this feeling and just know that this person is going to cross boundaries, you know, (laughs) and make me, break some laws or be close or something. And then sure enough. And I, and I think that when I was, you know, telling, you know, my mom or telling someone and, and, you know, it kind of might come off like, Oh, you know, just think positive or, you know, or just kind of, because there's not like a strong reasoning as to why, you know, that, but it's just, you just know it and you just maybe felt it. And then sure enough, after it happened, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, you were kind of, you know, you know, suspecting that this could happen or something. So that's how it works with me. Okay, let's move on to D's. So if, if you mostly chose D's, that means you're clairaudient, and that means you receive information audibly um, through hearing. This could mean that you could turn on the TV right at a certain time when someone's talking, and maybe something that you're dealing with in your life 
it applies like the message you hear on the TV applies right to what you're feeling or something. Um, or maybe you hear a pertinent message through a song on the radio or the sound of someone's voice can remind you of, of something that, you know, you needed to know to make a decision or something like that. It could also be hearing animals or car or hearing cars, whatever sound, uh, people who are clear audience, they might hear their name being called upon when they wake up or they might hear their inner voice or an outside disembodied voice. And I have an example of that. Uh, when me and Kimi, we went to Brazil and we were able to witness this uh, spiritual candomblé ceremony. And again, that'll be another show about some of these uh, spiritual pilgrimages we've been on together. And uh, so what ended up happening after the whole ceremony was over, we were walking back to the cars and it was very moving and I felt just very calm and at peace. And I just, I just remember standing on the side of the road, getting ready to get into the driver's car. And I turned to Kimi and I heard this voice and it said, when you get home, it's time to move out. And I was like, what? You know, and I loved that apartment in Chicago. And I told Kimi, I just said, yeah, you know, cause my lease was coming up, but it was like this inner knowing and, but, but it was also this voice that just said, you know, it's time to move out. And, you know, I, so when I got back, you know, I did decide to go ahead and move. I mean, I didn't have to, but I did decide to go ahead and move. And it just so happened, you know, right after that, not too long after that, uh, there were some people who in my family who became, um, terminate, terminally ill and I had to be there for them and help them. And it, it really, I would have never been in that apartment anyway. So I was really saving money and time and commuting and everything, uh, by moving out. But again, you know, before that point, I wasn't really in that even space thinking about moving in that way. But that is one time where I feel like I definitely heard that, that very confident, supportive voice. And I was feeling peaceful. So again, you know, just how that clear sentience and the clear audience were kind of working with each other. So, you know, I pay careful attention now to those messages and take them more seriously. And clear audience can also man itself in dreams. Or, you know, if someone is talking to you and delivering clear information through your dreams or vision, uh, also the intent of the message can be clear and and instantaneous um, through that clear audience. So sometimes a deceased loved one can appear in your dream or uh, send a message to you. And I know that 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 does often happen with me, uh, with deceased loved ones visiting a dream visitation. And so Doreen defines clear hearing as that voice that you hear in dangerous situations that might say, you know, it's time to leave the party or don't go to that gas station. People who are very sensitive to noise are often clear audience. So if you experience uh, ringing in your ears, you know, things of that nature, or you're very sensitive to sound, you know, that's another example. Okay, so now you should know which is your primary clear. That was the quiz. And definitely uh, tweet us. You can use the hashtag spirit path. Our uh, Twitter address is at on the spirit path, or you can pop on over to Instagram uh, at spirit path podcast and just, you know, leave a comment underneath and let us know which Claire is your predominant one. And the purpose of this quiz is just to help us understand what our strengths and weaknesses are and just learning the language so that you can really receive your intuitive messages. It gives you a chance to really see what channel is strongest for you. And again, many of these clairs work together and I, and I feel like it even changes sometimes. You might have one that's stronger than the other. Um, I feel like I go between clairvoyance and clairsentience, but like I said, I do have hits of clear cognizance or clairaudience, or at least I'm just more aware now when it does happen. Um, but I feel like when I really began to be a cancer, which is my astrological sign, that's when I really kind of got into understanding emotions and how they could be information bringers because I wasn't always in tune with my emotions and didn't really see their value. I didn't have any kind of spiritual understanding of emotions and I took them really personally. Like I thought I had to own all of them, but now I know that really it's just kind of bringing me information and I really work to develop my emotional intelligence. And I feel like that really helped me a lot with understanding my feelings and the messages I was getting. Because before I really, I really used to judge my feelings, you know, like, oh man, I shouldn't be feeling like that. And And I would really kind of maybe try to talk myself out of having a feeling. And I wasn't understanding like, no, that's something you really need to pay attention to and, you know, not judge it, but listen to it. 
Yeah, that was this whole Claire's, this quiz and everything. It was a huge game changer for me in my life because, yeah, you often hear people, oh, you're too sensitive or you shouldn't have emotions. You shouldn't have feelings about this and that and everything. And we're we're creatures who have senses. So, you know, again, you're getting this information. So when you think about people who stuff down feelings or emotions and are just kind of numb to it, it's like, yeah, you're kind of closing off maybe a part of yourself, you know, to receive that divine guidance and, you know, suppressing certain things. So definitely learning how to harness these emotions and, you know, be able to hear the guidance and get the communication was huge for me. So whichever may be your strongest Claire, that's good to know, but don't stop there. Um, you know, and really pay attention because they all work together. And so you really want to see how they're connecting. If you hear something and that leads to knowledge about it or feeling something and that leads to hearing something, just really pay attention to that. And so now that you, you know, when you do start paying attention and you're seeing these messages, you probably now want to know, well, how do I know which messages are true guidance and which ones are from my higher self and which messages are from my lower self? And that is what we're going to cover now. So it's really important to take into account that you could be picking up other people's energy. So um, sometimes it may not be your higher self or sometimes it might be a fearful side of yourself. But either way, um, you'll know true divine guidance from false guidance based on certain characteristics. So the characteristics of true guidance are it has a mature tone and content. It's going to talk about your life mission and your life purpose and it sounds familiar. It doesn't sound like left field. It, you cut, it has a familiarity to it. And it wants you to be joyful right now, not in the future. Uh, it usually talks to you and says you. And it assures you that you can do it. You know, really empowering you and having a loving, energizing feel to it. Whereas false guidance is going to be the complete opposite. It's going to have an immature tone and really immature suggestions it's going to talk about how you can compete with others and it might seem really out of sync with your ideas or interests. Like you might get an idea like, whoa, that's completely different from how I am. So maybe it's really true guidance and that's usually not the case. And it usually wants you to delay your happiness. Like you could only, you know, man, I wish I was happy, but I could only be happy if I had this thing or if it's in the future. And it loves to use the word I constantly. So if you're like, hey, I should do this thing I'm completely disinterested in. That's usually a good sign that it's false guidance. And false guidance also tears down your confidence. It weakens you and it drains your enthusiasm and your energy. So those are great ways to know, you know, what's that Bible passage? Like you got to judge a fruit or tree by its fruit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a biblical scholar, okay? <laughs> you, you see me over here, crickets. Yeah, it, but I like that idea. So you can kind of tell the origins of these ideas by by their quality. Yeah, so woo, pack show. I hope everyone learned a little bit something more about them, themselves today. And I'm so glad that we got to go through all this information and share the clairs with you and, you know, have you start to notice these things and give some value to how you experience your uh, divine communication. So it's such a powerful topic and we're going to keep um, these conversations going further down the rabbit hole in our next show on mediumship. I cannot even believe we're going to be doing this. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. We're going to discuss the art and practice of connecting with loved ones who have passed over onto the other side. This is probably one of my favorite topics. I mean, we're pretty passionate about it. We talk about it all the time. I mean, I'm just a very strong believer in the other side. And I just can't wait to talk about what people are up to over there. (laughs) Yes, it's such a it used to be like a more taboo topic. I mean, it still kind of is. But now things are a little bit more mainstream with Long Island Medium and Ghost Whisper and all those uh, shows and things that have been on. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate all of our listeners and supporters. Let's keep the conversation going. We want to know what is spirituality to you? How do you define it? Leave a comment on our Instagram at Spirit Path Podcast or hit us up on Twitter at On The Spirit Path and please use the hashtag Spirit Path.
subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. And if you enjoy the show and want to support, please leave a glowing rating and review on iTunes. Thank you.